Hi friends, so let's now proceed to the next chapter on theory discussion, which is on portfolio management. Uh, just to give a broad context from a theory coverage point of view, we'll first see what is portfolio management, what are the objectives of it, what are the various steps we'll have to follow, what is systematic risk versus unsystematic risk. You would have learnt about Markowitz model, capital asset pricing model. You will cover that as well in the theory segment. Then we have two types of strategy. One is active portfolio strategy, passive portfolio strategy. So we will cover something on that as well, active versus the passive. And I think uh, the material does talk about various uh, investments option which are there. Like you have equity option, debt option, alternative investments, uh, distress securities, gold, real estate. So there is some discussion on each of these areas. That is what broadly this segment covers. So we'll now get into specific question. What are the activities carried out in portfolio management? Let's first be very clear. Portfolio management does not mean it's only equity portfolio. You can have combination of various asset classes. In a practical world, we have different asset classes like we have debt, we have equity, we have uh, maybe real estate. These are something which are there in your material. Gold, alternative investments, mutual funds. So we have multiple options which are there. So what is the act? Activity I carry out in a portfolio management is I first decide what are the securities in which I want to make my investment. So the first thing is very clear selection of securities in which the investment would be done. Once you have decided 10 securities, you can create multiple feasible portfolio from those securities, different combination, different balances different weights you can try and create combination of all feasible portfolio in this finally combination you decide an optimal portfolio what is an optimal portfolio i can have an optimum portfolio which maximizes return or minimizes risk or i can try to balance both depends on my requirement I can try to maximize return. I can try to minimize risk, but I'll have to decide a portfolio, deciding the weight or proportion of the different constant security so that it is an optimal portfolio for the concerned investor. I wanted an optimal portfolio. Now, next, what are the objectives of portfolio management? When I'm trying to create a portfolio, why am I doing this portfolio management? There can be multiple objectives. The material talks about the primary objectives or primary factors which we need to consider. The first and the foremost important factor which anybody will tell is security or safety of principle. It is important that I have return of my capital rather than return on capital. Return on capital is earning something on the money I invested. That is critical. But what is very critical is at least my capital should come back. A lot of people do not make investment in stock market. Reason is very simple. They are concerned about the security or the safety of the principle. So at least I want to ensure that my principal value adjusted for inflation comes back. Second, stability of income. In this age, see what normally people do is they work maybe from 25 or 30 till 50 years or 55 years, whatever time period you want to work and you create a huge corpus. This corpus is created so that I am able to meet my post-retirement expenses. So I need some stability of this income. This income should come to me on a steady state basis so that I can meet my objective of meeting the post-retirement expenses. There can be other uh, objectives, but whatever is, you need some stability of income. Capital growth. What is capital growth? Is trying to invest in growth securities which have 
huge potential of upward movement that is the share prices will go up which leads to improvement in overall valuation of mine marketability and liquidity are two important parameters what is marketability is ability of mine to buy or sell a security whenever i buy a security i need to ensure that it should be easy for me to buy and sell that is in the markets there should be large number of buyers and sellers for a security many a time some securities become illiquid how does it become illiquid because in the market many people are not doing this buying and selling so if you have an illiquid security you will get stuck with that security so you want a security which is highly liquid in nature or highly marketable in nature then what is liquidity in the context of the see normally liquidity or marketability is similar but in this context is can i convert my investments into cash immediately for example real estate when you buy a real estate it is not easy for you to convert that into cash immediately so converting into cash is very critical because i may get certain opportunities in the market during covid times when stock market crashed significantly if people had money and the risk appetite they could have invested in stock market and got healthy returns the returns have been fantastic post the covid period other objectives like diversification and favorable tax status also come into picture diversification is trying to put money into businesses which are diverse in nature where one business gets impacted favorably by one factor and the same factor adversely impacts the other business example monsoons if monsoons are bad it is good for few businesses it is bad for few businesses so if you are trying to invest in wide range of securities and industries you will be able to achieve this objective of diversification what is favorable tax status is whenever i try to make my investments i should see that can i improve my post tax return because certain for example if you invest in fixed deposit if you are on the highest slab you will be paying 30% tax when you invest in equities you have a fixed uh, capital gain rate ltcg there is a fixed rate stcg there is a fixed rate so depending on the tax provisions my returns can because what ultimately matters is how much do i get in hand and tax is an expense before i get my money in hand so my objective is to ensure or my objective is to get maximum post tax return so there are various factors which we need to consider for portfolio management security or safety of principal stability of income what is stability of income is regular income can i get investment in growth securities this is to increase the capital or improve my portfolio value marketability and liquidity marketability is the ability to buy and sell faster liquidity is converting quickly into cash so that i can get benefit out of any uh, attractive opportunities in the market favorable tax status and diversification what are the phases of portfolio management see portfolio management doesn't happen so simple in a practical world in fact uh, we do consult people i work in a place where i do consult people on creating a portfolio but before i start creating that we do ask lot of questions to a person and based on that we understand what are the expectation a person has because i will have to tailor the portfolio according to the requirements of the person some people will be able to take lot of risk some people are very risk averse and they don't want to take risk so portfolio management is a process and it's broadly involves five phases what are the five phases somewhere we talked about here selection of security creation of feasible portfolio deciding the weights after that you will have to monitor the performance and maybe do revision of the portfolio security analysis what is security analysis analyzing the securities using risk return and the correlation correlation is necessary when you create a portfolio based on the chosen set of securities you can decide a list of portfolio 
Select the portfolio which is efficient and which is optimal according to your risk appetite. So security analysis, portfolio analysis, portfolio selection. These were the three activities you saw earlier. But after that, at regular intervals, you will have to analyze the performance and make revision. Once an optimal portfolio has been constructed, it becomes necessary to constantly monitor the portfolio. Because what is an optimal portfolio is one which is an, which has all efficient securities. When we did theory of dominance, you would have learned that a security is said to be efficient if it generates higher return with higher risk. But it generates lower return with higher risk or lower return with same risk or same return with lower risk, it becomes inefficient. So what happens is in the market, multiple securities performance keep changing. So whatever you have invested, could get dominated by someone else, could get dominated by someone else. Moment it gets dominated by someone else, it will become an inefficient security. It will become an inefficient security. So it's very critical that you constantly monitor and evaluate your performance. Assessing the performance over a selected period of time in terms of return and risk. Very, very critical. It's always return and risk. Return realized risk borne by the portfolio. Explain the traditional approach of portfolio management. Practically, whenever I have consulted my clients, I somewhere try to understand all this from him because based on this understanding only, we can decide what is the composition of debt, equity, alternative investment, mutual funds, real estate, what combination can I follow for a person because it all depends on the investor study. What is investor studies? Understanding age. Why age is very critical? Because as you become older, your ability to take risk goes down. In fact, there is a rule in the practical world. 100 minus age. This can be your risky investment. Whatever is your age. If you are 20 years, 80% can be in risky investment. If you are 60 years, only 40% can be in risky investment. So age, do you have any responsibility? Do you have uh, ability to take risks? See, when I understand age, health, responsibility, somewhere you will understand whether the person is having that risk-taking ability or not. So attitude towards risk. And what does he need? Does he need any regular income? Does he need liquidity? Liquidity is ability to convert this into cash immediately. So this is study of the investor. Once the investor study is done, then I decide what is the objective of the portfolio. A simple objective is maximizing the return or wealth while minimizing the risk. But a known fact is if you take more risk, more returns will increase. So deciding that combination, what is the right combination for a person? How much is the return he will be happy with? And how much is the risk he can take? The risk taking ability is not unlimited for people. They have limited risk appetite. So understand the risk appetite of the person and accordingly proceed ahead with what you want to do. Somewhere based on this, I will decide balancing fixed interest security. I'll keep reading. You'll understand these are self-explanatory. But I want to explain the crux. Fixed interest security against equities. Fixed interest, low risk, equity, high risk. High dividend payout companies. If companies are paying good dividend, they are technically lower risk company. As compared to high earning growth, this is high risk. This is high risk. This is low risk. Fixed income, low risk, equity, high risk. Finding the income of the growth portfolio. Income versus the growth component, which is basically dividend versus the growth capability. Balancing income tax payable against capital gains tax or technically dividend dividend tax, not dividend distribution tax. On the dividends you pay tax against the capital gains. Balancing transaction cost against capital gains. That is whenever you are making shift from one security to the another security, there is one securities transaction tax to be paid. There are certain transaction tax to be paid. There are capital gains tax to be paid. So you will have to see whether it is whether it is worthwhile or not and many a times people keep some liquid cash with them what is the issue with liquid cash is they do not earn any returns but still i keep that 
to seize any opportunity in case an opportunity comes i want to just get benefit of that opportunity that is possible only when liquidity is available so investment strategies basically maximizing return or balancing risk and return balancing the risk component versus the return fixed interest security will give you low return carries low risk equities have high return high risk diversification is basically a process by which i am trying to invest in companies which are the combination of companies which leads to elimination of unsystematic risk if you are able to eliminate unsystematic risk then diversification is happening and diversification is just not equity diversification they are saying balancing of equity against fixed interest bearing securities also sought so basically you will have to do balancing of equities with interest with the debt equities and debt investments are very critical then based on what we have discussed earlier i go ahead and try to select individual investment if it is stock investment you can do fundamental analysis you can do technical analysis or you can do random analysis or random selection random selection is basically trying to select any security without any logic in place so methods for selecting sound investments by calculating the true or intrinsic value of a share and comparing with current market value which is fundamental analysis or predicting the future share price from past movement which is called technical analysis other than this practical world markets have three form of efficiency one is strong semi strong and weak if it's strong form of efficiency all information is reflected in the price but many at times market is weak form of efficiency so in case i am getting some extra information about the company which is not good inside information inside information is sought and relied upon to move to diversified switch quickly to winners than loser companies uh, so trying to get information about the company or information in newspapers expert advices so based on all this try to select companies with good asset backing dividend growth good earning growth high quality management with appropriate dividend and leverage policy so that all these becomes part of my portfolio i try to select individual investments which are good either through fundamental analysis or technical analysis or through random selection these are the various possibilities or various ways of selecting the security so if you see here traditional approaches i sit with the investor understand what is his risk preference how do i understand through age responsibility his investments other assets need for regular income uh, based on all this i decide what is the risk appetite of the investor so i decide the portfolio objective then try to balance high risk with low risk or high returns with low return fixed interest versus the equity high dividend versus the growth company the income tax payable versus the capital gain tax uh, dividend distribution sorry transaction cost versus the capital gain tax and do i need to keep liquidity or not c for diversification and then go for once the strategy is decided go for selection of security which is either to fundamental analysis or technical analysis or random selection and in case you can get some extra information about the company go with that information through expert advice or through inside information or through certain newspaper articles try to get information and select companies which have good payment track record good management good quality good dividend growth good past growth all that you will have to take care okay uh, let's move to the next question which is on what are the elements of risk and in investment i think this should be a very simple question for me to discuss there are two types of risk we have systematic risk and unsystematic risk systematic risk is otherwise called as non diversifiable risk and unsystematic risk is called diversifiable risk so beta is basically a measure of systematic risk these are the factors which are going to impact everyone in the economy or the industry so it's not that only i am getting impacted everyone is getting impacted that is systematic risk which is basically macro factors systematic risk comprises factors that are external to a company affect a large number of securities simultaneously it is interest rate risk any changes in interest rate 
market risk and purchasing power risk which is inflation this arises due to variability in the interest rates from time to time particularly affects debt securities like bonds and debentures purchasing power inflation risk that emanates from the very fact that inflation affects your purchasing power so if inflation keeps increasing or decreasing it's going to impact market risk is prices of any particular share move up or down for some period in time with other shares in the market that is in general if market is bullish if it's a bull market everyone will start going up if market is a bear market everyone will start going down unsystematic risk is which is specific to a company we learned that there are two types of unsystematic risk one is your business risk and another one is financial risk these are factors which are specific to a company micro factors internal to companies and affect only those particular company these are controllable to a great extent business risk emanates from sale and purchase of securities affected by business cycle technological changes business cycles affect all types of securities financial risk is due to the capital structure if you have lot of debt high debt and high debt equity ratio so excess of debt can affect a company which leads to increase in the risk so that is on the unsystematic risk it is possible it is possible for us to shift or for us to eliminate the entire unsystematic risk by trying to select companies which are having negative correlation what are the assumptions of markowitz model now markowitz model was focusing on only two elements if you remember markowitz was an approach to calculate portfolio risk and portfolio return the focus was on calculating portfolio return portfolio risk so that is what it was focusing on just give me a minute just a minute Ah, okay so it was focusing on the two elements which is return and the risk and major assumptions of markowitz model focuses only on these two you read every item it will focus on these the return on an investment adequately summarizes the outcome of the investment that is what return you get is the final end result of an investment investors can visualize a probability distribution of rate of return why i am able to visualize this based on that only i'll be able to get the variance of return risk estimates are proportional to the variance of return higher variance higher risk lower variance lower risk investors base their investments on two criteria expected return and variance all the four points are on that fifth is also on this all investors are risk averse what is risk averse is i know for this risk how much return i want if i want to increase the return i'll be able to take extra risk so somebody says can you increase risk yes i'll be able to take risk minimum risk okay any extra risk i take i want extra return i want extra return then apart from this there's something called as rational investor what is rational investor is whenever any decision is to be taken instead of going by emotions people take decision based on logical facts many a times emotions play a part in making a buy or sell decision that's not acceptable as far as markowitz model is concerned investors are assumed to be rational they would assume greater returns to lesser ones given equal or small risk and are risk averse see basic logic is if you have two securities you will select a security which is better either in terms of return or in terms of risk or is dominating the other one you cannot select a security which is getting dominated by the other one you cannot select something which is getting dominated say you will prefer greater returns to lesser one higher return to lesser return assuming you have same risk assuming have same risk or smaller risk or smaller risk return can be measured in terms of when you calculate that uh, return can be dividend and capital appreciation it can also be measured in terms of items like npv return could be measured suitability suit um, suitably sorry return could be any suitable measure of monetary inflow like npv uh, yield yield is basically what you generate that is dividend plus capital appreciation divided by the opening price p1 minus p0 plus d1 divided by p0 so your yield is what is normally measured as return 
and for that you will have to calculate the standard deviation the standard deviation can be measured in absolute rupees it can be measured in percentage so npv is in rupee terms yield is in percentage term so basic focus of this theory markowitz model is an investor will have to focus on risk and return he has to maximize return minimize risk but in case you want a person to take extra risk he is ready to take as long as you generate extra return and an investor is assumed to be rational in nature then comes the capital asset pricing model what does capital asset pricing model says is when you want to calculate the required return of any investment you just need to focus on an item called as non diversifiable risk or systematic risk beta beta is basically the critical part i just need to focus on beta and not the overall risk what is overall risk we your markowitz model is focusing on overall risk risk versus the return risk means overall risk which is standard deviation whereas what is this model capital asset pricing model is saying is focus the focus of capital asset pricing model is basically on non diversifiable risk what is non diversifiable risk is risk which cannot be eliminated or systematic risk the model explains the relationship between the expected return non diversifiable risk and the valuation of securities it's based on a premises that diversifiable risk of a security is eliminated so you will keep doing diversification till you get to the systematic risk and basically expected return is equal to rf plus beta into rm minus rf the model shows the expected return of a security has two components risk free rate of interest and the risk premium when you plot this in a graph it is called security market line another graph which you plot is called capital market line where the risk is measured through standard deviation now this also has certain assumptions as we saw there the most important assumption is again on rational investment and efficient market what is efficient market is no single person can influence or predict the market there should be a competitive market there should be a competitive market where financial securities can be bought and sold with full information of risk and return available to all participants you will be in a position to do proper analysis and 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 select select securities through buying in a competitive market buying in a competitive market rational investment goals is i should not go by emotions i should assume a higher return for an acceptable level of risk if you want to minimize the risk then please be ready for lower level of return risk aversion what is risk aversion is trying to minimize risk but at times i am ready to take risk and get extra returns i want to generate more returns i am ready to take extra rid uh, one thing you would have done in uh, your analysis of uh, what to say arbitrage that ability to borrow at riskless rate of interest ability to borrow at riskless rate of interest which is not practically feasible so some of the assumptions here are not practically feasible 4 5 6 all those are not practically feasible in fact 7 also cfpm assumes that all assets are divisible and liquid what is divisible is you can buy fraction of shares technically in india's context not possible as of now securities can be exchanged without any transaction cost which is also not possible companies do not face any bankruptcy or insolvency which is also not there lot of companies do face this risk market is an equilibrium means there is no undervalued security overvalued security which is possible if it's an efficient market so markowitz model was focusing on return with total risk we were considering total risk in the calculation what is this model is considering this model is not considering the total risk it's considering only the non diversifiable risk which is measured through beta it has certain assumptions where you need an efficient market which means market is in equilibrium rational investment goals need to be there risk aversion is critical that is if you want to generate extra return be ready to take risk if you are generating xyz return or if you are generating 10% return for an 8% risk i'll not take 9% risk for the same 10% return i will avoid risk no transaction cost which is not logical uh, divisible 
borrow at risk free rate of interest no bankruptcy all that are not possible but still without with all those illogical assumptions i'm talking about there are two three main advantages of capm it can help you in calculating the required return also if it's an unlisted company you can still calculate the cost of equity a reasonable basis for estimating the required return on investment which is built into it so radr can be used in capital budgeting if you are not paying dividend or if you are an unlisted company which does not pay dividend still it can be used to calculate the cost of equity uh, limitations beta as such has lot of limitation because reliable beta does not exist for shares of many companies so if beta itself is wrong your cost of equity is going to be wrong so the beta itself becomes wrong which leads to an incorrect cost of equity and we are saying we are only bother about systematic risk we are only bother about systematic risk but let's be very clear in the practical world i do carry unsystematic risk it's not that unsystematic risk do not exist in the practical world so saying that only systematic risk exist is not logical you will have to somewhere give importance to unsystematic risk because many a times i cannot have a diversified portfolio another risk which their limitation which they are talking about i don't see that to be a main issue they are saying in the practical world this risk free rate of interest information may not be able to get or sometimes you will get multiple risk free rate of interest in india's context it's very easy for me to get the risk free rate of interest i just go to government uh, rbi website and look at the government yields i'll be able to get it but yeah there can be a 3 month yield there can be a 6 month yield there can be a 12 month yield so different risk free rate of interest can be there but it's not difficult to get the risk free rate of interest so the advantage is calculating the cost of equity or risk adjusted return and for a no dividend company calculating what should be the cost of equity limitations is beta as such has lot of problems the same problem spills over here you are ignoring unsystematic risk which is not very logical and maybe you do not have adequate information about the risk free rate of interest the information availability can also be a challenge okay let's next move to the portfolio strategies in the practical world we have two types of portfolio strategy active portfolio strategy and passive portfolio strategy active portfolio strategies basically employed by many mutual fund managers where they keep doing a lot of buying and selling they constantly monitor the portfolio and do lot of buying and selling so the objective of an active portfolio manager is to earn positive alpha what is positive alpha is earning higher risk adjusted return earning superior return after adjustment of risk vast majority of the funds which are available in india are active funds because you will do lot of research about the individual company try to gather extensive data and then do these set of companies do timing of the investment they will try to invest when markets are undervalued try to exit when markets are overvalued involves departing from the normal strategy for long run asset mix to reflect assessment of various assets in the near future market timing market timing is based on general market movement sector rotation what is sector rotation is they will keep trying to change sectors they'll keep trying sometimes they'll invest more in pharma sector then they'll invest more in financial sector then they may shift to it sector then they may shift to some other se auto sector depending on how the markets are changing depending on the market movement sector or group rotation may apply to both stock and bond component it is used more compulsively with respect to the strategy involves shifting the weights will change based on their asset outlook security selection basically you are trying to buy an underpriced security and sell an overpriced security involves in a search for an underpriced security active stock selection you may decide to employ fundamental analysis technical analysis and find out a company which is superior return use of specialized investment concept what is specialized investment concept is trying to find out the hidden gems in the market trying to find out 
the hidden gems where you are trying to find neglected or out of favor stock asset stock technology stock cyclical stock you are trying to find as using as some specific logic you are making investment in certain companies which are out of favor so this involves market timing sector rotation you will keep changing the sectors buying undervalued security or searching for an undervalued security and use of specialized investment concept then what is passive portfolio strategy passive is basically index funds you try to invest in nifty nifty consists of so many shares so i am investing in nifty 50 and i just keep quiet i don't do make any changes unless uh, there is rebalancing of nifty which happens so if any change happens i'll do it. so according to passive portfolio manager he believes market is fully efficient so he just selects a portfolio and keeps quiet he does not do a lot of alterations in the portfolio unless the portfolio has reached a stage where it's not optimal rest with the tenant that capital market is fairly efficient fairly efficient create a well diversified portfolio hold the portfolio buy and hold it buy and hold it unless it becomes inconsistent with the investor risk return preference an example is index funds so passive strategy as well as active strategy both are there in the practical world people depend a uh, lot of times the passive strategy has turned out to giving better returns than active strategy also in india's context i think in large cap mutual funds uh, i read an article which said around 80 percent of the large cap mutual fund active mutual fund could not get the return which nifty was giving which is a passive fund a passive fund was generating better returns than an active fund after doing all the research you're still not able to beat markets so that can also happen in the practical world what are the criteria for bond selection I go back to security valuation topic where in bond valuation we have learned yield to maturity that's one important factor higher YTM is preferred as compared to lower YTM volatility which is based on duration default risk if at all any default risk is there I do not want to invest in those companies which are having default risk yield to maturity for represents the rate of return and earned by the investor so you would want to maximize ytm minimize risk of default to assess such risk one has to look at the credit rating of the bond if you do not have the credit rating analyze the various ratios of the company and then decide tax yield is in the past there were a lot of debt instruments where the tax benefit was there whatever income we were generating there were tax benefits on that so if you have that you can try to invest in such companies liquidity's ability to convert this into cash most of the fixed investments most of the fixed investments can quickly be converted into liquid if you created an fd you can break an fd also if you have invested in debt mutual fund you can convert into cash within day or two so all these are fairly liquid kind of an investment this is for bond selection ytm risk of default i will also include duration which is volatility tax sheet liquidity then what are the approaches for stock selection you know the approaches fundamental approach or fundamental analysis technical analysis and random selection technical analysis looks at the price behavior and volume data fundamental focuses on fundamental factors like earning level growth prospect risk exposure and then accordingly try to buy a company which is undervalued and sell a company which is overvalued random selection is market is efficient so whichever security you buy it doesn't really matter now the approach which i follow will largely depend on efficiency of the market and i think this can come as an mcq there are four types of efficiency one is inefficient market where technical analysis is very good because inefficient means you can predict future so use technical analysis and try to do then your weak form of efficiency semi strong form of efficiency and strong form of efficiency if you have weak semi strong and strong strong form go ahead and do take a random selection because everything is great everything is great highly efficient market random selection is best inefficient market technical is best weak and semi strong and all i think the fundamental approach is going to work better so inefficiency best strong efficiency best strong efficiency best everywhere else it is 
poor technical analysis may not serve much purpose in case market is efficient because efficient means you cannot predict future if it's inefficient market where you can predict the future what is the point of doing fundamental analysis so no fundamental analysis why this best good and fair when it is strong form of efficiency all information about the company whether it's private information or public information is already reflected in the share price the entire data about the company is reflected in the share price so when entire data is already reflected there may not be great usage of doing fundamental analysis so when it's weak form of efficiency only when past data is considered fundamental analysis is best then good then fair random selection and all you should not do if it's inefficient market because do uh, your technical analysis and do prediction if it's weak form do fundamental analysis otherwise random can work random will work best in case it's a strong form of efficiency because there is no point in doing any analysis go ahead and select any companies various portfolio revision and rebalancing strategy i think we did talk about this in few problems there was a buy and hold policy constant mix policy and cppi constant proportion portfolio insurance buy and hold buy and sit idle do nothing you are not going to do anything after buying a share you will keep quiet that is called buy and hold policy you will not change the mix constant mix means you will keep doing rebalancing if indirectly what will happen in constant mixes you will sell equity if market increases and buy equity if market crashes cppi opposite buy equity if market increases and sell equity if market crashes this is what cppi was saying uh, i am not discussing much on the three policies because we have already done but again an mcq can come which is this pay off line protection and performance in flat market what is pay off line is what kind of returns it can generate a straight straight means markets go up the returns will go markets go down the returns will go down what is constant mix is concave return and there's a convex return you could have learned maybe uh, in science you could have come across this term called concave lens and a convex lens so what is concave return is in this case what is going to happen is if markets are going up unfortunately when markets go up i sell my equity i sell my equity so my additional returns will keep going down rate of additional payoff reduces with increase in prices here if markets are going up you are buying more so further going up you are buying more so the returns will increase rate of additional payoff increases with increase in prices and rate of additional payoff reduces with increase in prices protection in up or down market buy and hold policy up market great down market will help you in protection it will do some protection how does it do protection is very simple when the market is going down sorry it does not do protection sorry sorry in the uh, down market buy and hold policy is not going to do of much of help cppi will be of help because in the up market also it's good but it is continuous up continuous down that's the only point cppi is very good if it's continuously going up or continuously going down good in down market performs well in up market constant mix policy somewhere it gives some protection in the down market because how it gives protection is if it goes down sorry if it goes down you start buying more and if it goes up you start selling so it works opposite so your constant mix policy has this issue the issue is if markets are continuously going up or continuously going down it will have a challenge so it performs well in flat markets it performs well in flat markets cppi want either continuous up or continuous down because continuous up means you are buying when markets are going up you are selling when markets are going down if it keeps fluctuate like the cppi will fail and we have seen this in problem the buy and hold policy will somewhere be performing in between these two constant mix and the cppi policy again mcq can get tested the payoff is straight concave return what is concave is the rate of additional payoff reduces with increase in prices and rate of additional payoff increases with increase in prices so straight concave and convex from a protection point of view buy and hold policy 
in down market doesn't help cppi is the best up market you are buying more down market you are selling so technically it does well the only challenge is if it uh, remains flat then you do perform poorly in a cppi policy a uh, flat market is good uh, for your constant mix policy various type of asset allocation strategy i think there are four strategies which your material talks about what is let's first understand asset allocation what is asset allocation is deciding a composition of debt equity alternative investments uh, mutual funds uh, gold real estate so what combination of the mix or what mix you want to do the first one is i will ask the investor what is his risk what is his return and decide the mix based on that i am not looking at what is happening in the marketplace which is technically called strategic asset allocation under this strategy optimal portfolio mixes based on return risk and covariance is generated and you will do adjustment periodically to restore target allocation based on what is the investor's view tactical is once you decide your risk and return you also see what is the market expectation change based on the expectation about capital market condition if markets are likely to go up invest more in equities market are likely to go down invest more in debt insured asset allocation is cppi constant proportion portfolio insurance under this strategy risk exposure for changing portfolio values is adjusted if values go up you have more ability to take risk if values go down you have lesser ability to take risk what is integrated asset allocation is combining the market side view and your personal view capital market condition and investor objectives are examined and the allocation that serves the investors needs while incorporating the capital market forecast is determined so you are trying to take a view of the market as well as the investor in an integrated asset allocation in strategic asset allocation you just go by what the investor wants select a portfolio keep revising in case the mix has gone for a change tactical asset allocation is trying to take a futuristic view on each of the asset classes and changing insured asset allocation is cppi constant proportion where you invest in safer asset class till the extent of floor value and the extra values invested in risky asset class as risk increases you are able to as risk increase or as value increases your ability to take risk also increases that is what happens in your insured asset allocation okay the next one is explain process return computation strategies relating to fixed income portfolio process not sure why they have asked the process again because process used to remain same you will have to decide what is your objective decide the investment policy select securities do revision if you want so setting up objective drafting the guidelines decide whether you want to do an active or a passive strategy selection of securities and evaluation of performance returns can be calculated in multiple ways one is a simple return which is called arithmetic rate of return or a weighted average rate of return for weighted average you can give time as a weight or rupee as a weight arithmetic rate of return time weighted rate of return rupee weighted rate of return or the irr approach which is called annualized return next on the strategy side again we have passive strategy and we have active strategy passive strategy is very simple you try to invest in a set of funds or set of bonds and fixed income security and do nothing beyond that so buy and hold strategy buy and hold strategy or replication strategy which is called indexation strategy like you have a nifty index we can have certain fixed income indexes so i invest in those bonds in the mf chapter sorry in the security analysis valuation chapter you would have learned about immunization are technically matching cash flow both are same immunization is immuning myself against the interest rate risk where i try to invest in those bonds whose duration is equal to my investment horizon so immunization is a strategy which can help me in avoiding interest rate risk 
matching cash flow is also same thing which will help you in immunizing your portfolio basically what is matching cash flow is depending on the outflows you are going to get you match the inflows against that active strategy means you are going to keep changing your composition primarily between short term bonds and long term bonds that's the primary two types of bonds which can be invested so first i'll do forecasting of interest rates based on my forecasting of interest rates if interest rates are likely to fall i'll invest in long term bonds because they will give me higher rate of interest whereas in market interest rates have gone down and if you have lower rate of interest then you will sell all those bonds if your interest rates are going to increase say if interest rates are going to fall invest in long term bonds what will this do interest rates have gone down but you keep earning a higher rate of interest if they are likely to go up sell your long term bonds please sell your all bonds forecasting interest rates based on that if interest rates are likely to fall if interest rates are likely to fall then the portfolio manager will buy long term bonds and if they are likely to increase then he'll sell long term bonds now in this also practical world there are three types of strategy they have talked about many a times i personally follow a bullet strategy where i just invest in single type of a fixed income security it can it need not be a bond it can be just a fixed deposit which you created barbell strategies you are doing equal investment in short term bonds and long term bonds what is ladder strategy is you will invest in six month you can call it as six month fd one year fd Two year FD, three year FD, five year FD, different maturity period. So as as time passes by, you will see one or the other FD keeps maturing. So if you invest in one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, every year one FD will mature. So that can provide you the required liquidity if needed. Otherwise, you'll have to keep breaking the fixed deposit. So that is on the active strategies. Uh, on the active strategy, where we have three types of strategy. Also, there's something called as bond swaps. Swaps is very simple. Sell something. and buy something else this can be an international swap where you sell a domestic bond and buy an international bond or sell an international bond and buy a domestic bond it can be an international swap it can be a tax related swap what is tax related swap is i am having loss in one bond and profit in the other bond so what i do is i sell that loss making bond so that whatever capital loss i generate here can help me in setting off some other capital gain i made so pure yield pickup swap what is yield pickup swap is high yield bond you buy low yield bond you sell low yield bond technically will have lower risk low yield bond will technically will have lower risk so here what you do when you do this there is a possibility of capital loss capital loss substitution swap what is substitution swap is you are trying to swap similar risk bonds but they are different prices different prices means different yield that is sbi 10% rate of interest icici is a 12% rate of interest both are almost same risk why they are having different rate of interest so let me sell the sbi bond by the icici bond this can be because of temporary imbalance as i said international spread swap where you domestic bond for a foreign bond tax swap capital loss to set off against capital gain and interest rate swap is fixed bond to a floating bond or a floating bond to a fixed bond so this is on your investment process for a fixed income portfolio where you have passive strategies as well as active strategy in passive strategy we try to invest in either go through an immunization technique or a buy and hold technique or an indexation technique or a matching technique and where in an act active strategy what we try to do is we try to ensure that we are swapping from one bond to the other bond depending on the market expectation when interest rates are likely to go up invest more in long term bonds interest rates are likely to go down invest less in long term bonds so this will keep happening you will keep playing around this that is based on the strategy you will keep changing where you can do a single investment which is called bullet strategy barbell strategy equal investment in long term bond versus short term bond ladder strategy investment in maturities of different risk class in substitution we have international substitution or you can go through your
tax related substitution that is tax related swap international spread swap a substitution swap or a pure yield pickup swap what are the features of alternative investment let me first explain what is alternative investment in the practical world increasingly alternative investments are picking up what are alternative investments these are not regular kind of an investments which we make what are regular investment debt investments equity investments gold investment real estate investment these are certain risky investments which i am going to do which is specific these are specific kind of a product and because they are specific high risk highly liquid an example vc investment venture capital investment can be considered to be an alternative investment so high risk high return kind of an illiquid investments transparency issues will be there high fees being a specific nature the transaction fees are quiet on the higher side limited historical data illiquidity it is very difficult to convert this into cash because buyer may not be available less transparency less transparency that is you do not have much information private company investments extensive research would be needed whenever a vc company is making investment they will do a lot of research on the company and they make investment leveraged buying is many a times whenever i am doing alternative investments i may try to take a loan against it if feasible if in the market if i can get a loan i'll try to take a loan and then make the investment what are the characteristics of real estate which makes valuation of them complex see for valuation to be easier i need an efficient market i need good comparable information good historical data liquidity should be there all those are characteristics of stock market efficient market here it's inefficient market there it is liquid here it is illiquid comparable data is available there comparable data is not available here so lot of challenges come information may not be freely available in case like financial securities illiquidity there it is liquid comparisons are not possible high transaction cost there the transaction cost are there but they are on the lower side and you do not have an organized market what are the approaches to valuation of real estate i've already covered this in the problem solving area where we had a sales comparison approach where you try to find the average selling price per square feet and compare that to our area in square feet and get the sales value income approach is valuation of a perpetuity decide what is the income you are going to get that is perpetual income and divide by the capitalization rate cost based approaches what is the cost of the land and the building that's the third approach and cash flow based approach prediction of present value of future cash flows discounted at investors required rate of return sales comparison income approach cost approach and these discounted after tax cash flow approach explain gold as an alternative investment in fact gold as an investment is considered to be a safe risk class it is considered to be a safe investment but it is also volatile in nature what is volatile is it can give negative returns gold normally does really well when market crashes whenever stock market crashes so if a person is investing in stock market along with gold it's a very good diversification measure when covid times when prices would have crashed you would have seen gold prices going up gold normally works reverse of the stock market it has an inverse relationship so gold is a very good asset class because it provides you long term uh, capital appreciation highly liquid gold is a popular investment option particularly among indians with jewelry being the common way to invest uh, other than the jewelry there are other ways of investing in gold because in jewelry you have making charges and all due to jeweler charges gold bars that is you can buy gold bars or coins of different denomination physical storage needs to be done practical world there is a sovereign gold bond which is released by the government the government or the rbi issues the sovereign gold bond where i'll invest in the bond the price the price whatever is the current price at that price i'll invest and after 8 years 8 years is the maturity period you will get back the value of the gold there is no capital gain taxation on this i also get regular interest income no physical storage no expense all that is there investors pay the issue price in cash and the bonds are redeemed in cash they protect the quantity of gold paid eliminate storage risk 
and offer assurances of market value and also gives you interest. This is according to me the best way of investing in gold. If somebody wants to invest in gold, you should try to invest in this. Gold exchange traded funds is mutual funds. Basically, it's like a, it's a mutual fund. Gold ETF for a hybrid investment combining flexibility of stock investment with simplicity of gold investment. Only thing is there are certain expense ratios which are there, but it's still better than your physical gold. E-gold is again similar to your physical gold. You are going to get e-gold units. The only problem with e-gold units is again there are transaction costs which will be incurred. It does not have storage cost. Sovereign gold bond doesn't have storage cost doesn't have transaction cost, doesn't have capital gain tax and also gives you interest income. So that's the best way of investing in gold. So one is physical gold. Apart from that, gold bars is there. Sovereign gold bond is there. Gold exchange traded funds is there and electronic e-gold. What are distress securities? I think uh, we have already seen this in the chapter on uh, the business valuation where we would have learnt about distress company valuation. So distress companies are those which are almost near to bankruptcy. And in fact, your material talks about a very good strategy which you can adopt in a distress company. You should do investment in bond as well as shares. But what kind of investment? Long investment in bond and short investment in shares. This is a strategy they are talking about, like an arbitrage strategy. What is long investment in bonds? These bonds will give very high yield. Why are they giving high yield? Because they are under risk of bankruptcy. So if you invest, if companies does well, the long investment in bond will give you returns. It's a kind of purchasing the securities that are near bankruptcy. You are trying to invest in these companies because they are available at very low price. But obviously, it is those set of companies which are extremely risky. You take long position in debt, short position in equity. When company's condition improves, you will get interest payments which will be better than the loss you would have made on your equity share. And if it deteriorates, your short position on equity share will give you benefit. Uh, but before trying to invest in all this, be clear that they are liquidity risk. The securities may be saleable, may not be saleable event risk and event that particularly affects the company not economy as a whole market risk and human risk that is you have done a wrong judgment on the company distress company investments are extremely risky explain the strategy of portfolio rebalancing under which the value of the portfolio shall not fall below a specified value in normal market condition cppi constant proportion portfolio insurance where i have a base value I do not value, I do not want my investments to fall below that base value. There is a base value and I do not agree that my value falls below. That's called the floor value. For that, I make investments in non-fluctuating assets like treasury bills, bonds or fixed income investments and whatever risk related items are there, wherever risk is there, on those, uh, you are uh, wherever equity risk is there, you try to invest value which is beyond the floor value, which is beyond the floor value. So you have the overall value, deduct the floor value, whatever extra values left over, whatever extra values there, those extra value, the extra value can go in fluctuating assets, shall not fall below the specified floor. There is a multiplier effect which needs to be given, which is normally we have seen two times in the problem solving. So, I think I covered this chapter. Let me quickly revise this. First is activities carried out in portfolio management. That is, you'll have to select the security, create the various feasible portfolio and decide the weights are proportion. Objective security are stability of principle, stability of income, capital protection, favorable tax status, diversification, marketability, liquidity, phases, securities analysis, security portfolio analysis security selection or portfolio selection after that portfolio revision portfolio evaluation traditional approach of portfolio management analyze the investors risk return preferences and based on that decide the portfolio objective then you go to your investment strategy where you'll have to balance the risk and the return component and ultimately do security selection through your fundamental analysis and technical analysis the elements of risk systematic risk and unsystematic risk Assumptions of Markowitz model focuses only on risk and return. 
uh, your capital asset pricing model is focuses only on the non diversifiable risk where you have certain assumptions which are illogical like no transaction cost market is fully efficient also uh, securities are divisible liquidity is there no bankruptcy all that may not be logical but okay still these are some of the assumptions here advantages of cafm is it can give you risk adjusted return and can be used for no dividend paying company limitation is it has all those challenges which are there with beta availability of information can be a challenge on risk free rates of interest and you cannot ignore unsystematic risk if you have an undiversified portfolio active portfolio strategy where you will keep changing the portfolio based on the market movement passive portfolio strategy where you do not change you just invest in index and keep it as it is criteria for bond selection you look at yield to maturity you look at the risk of default how much is the risk of a default in a security so look at ytm look at risk of default look at if you can immunize your portfolio look at uh, any taxation kind of benefits can come liquidity can be there selection fundamental analysis technical analysis and random selection uh, portfolio revision buy and hold policy constant mix policy and constant proportion portfolio strategy buy and hold gives you the return in line with the market constant mix will give you concave cppi will give you convex returns asset allocation strategy integrated asset allocation where you try to link the market movement with the individual investor's requirement strategic asset is ignore the market just understand what he wants and then create the portfolio and do reevaluation tactical is understand the investor's requirements and make changes based on the market expectation and insured asset is like cppi portfolio process for fixed income portfolio security set up an objective decide your guideline create a portfolio strategy which is active and passive select securities and keep evaluating the performance you can calculate the return through a uh, simple average which is called arithmetic rate of return time weighted rate of return rupee weighted rate of return and annualized return again we have passive strategy and we have active strategy in passive strategy you try to do a buy and hold or an immunization or an indexation and matching cash flow in active strategy you can do a bullet kind of an investment or a barbell kind of an investment or a ladder kind of an investment or you can go through your swaps bond swaps where pure yield pickup swap is there substitution swap is there international bond swap is there Uh, tax swaps are there and interest rate swaps are there uh, alternative investments are those which carry high risk high returns illiquid transparency issues no market is there so consider all that high transaction cost similar points will come for your real estate inefficient market no organized market illiquid uh, comparisons cannot be made sales comparison approach can be done for valuation of real estate income based approach can be done uh, cost based approach is there and cash flow based approaches are there gold as an alternative investment is very good because it gives you that flexibility it <coughs> it helps you in protecting against the market movement it has an inverse relationship with what is happening in the stock market so kind of a good investment physical gold is one option but that's not a very good choice you can go through e gold electronic gold or you can go through sovereign gold bonds or you can go through gold exchange traded funds those are other options which are there best is sovereign gold bonds dresser securities are those which are almost near bankruptcy a strategy is long investment in bond short investment in equity and a strategy where you do not allow the portfolio value to fall below a specified value is called constant proportion portfolio insurance policy that's a policy or a strategy you can adopt if there are any doubts you can just message me on that thank you friends